Okay, I, I've got 10 o'clock on my phone, and that rules my life. So I think we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, let me just say a couple of things before we jump into uh, what we're going to talk about today. Uh, just a reminder for those of you that are jumping on, this is kind of by far the record for a number of people that we've had register for an off-the-shelf. Um, and so we're asking if you can, if you're in a position to, not only will you make sure that you are muted, but it might be helpful if you turn off your camera as well, just with bandwidth issues and, and things of that nature. Um, but welcome everybody to Off the Shelf for August. I truly, I cannot begin to tell you how excited I am uh, for our topic today and for our expert today who's who's here with us. Now, before I jump into a bio that you, you can see there to some extent, um, I just want to make a quick announcement uh, about next month. This is September 27th, Off the Shelf, where we took July off because so many people are gone. Um, and, and so what we're going to do is get back into a monthly routine. We're gonna talk about leading change. And uh, throughout our, our discussion today, Shane Krebs will be making sure that you have uh, a link to register for next month where we talk about how important change is to every organization. And of course, it's imperative that you and I as leaders, that we understand how to effectively enact change, right? So I just wanna bring your attention to that. We'll remind you of that uh, a, a couple of times. But it is truly my great pleasure to introduce you to Scott Christopher. Now, uh, you've got some of Scott's bio there. Uh, but let me just tell you, um, for let me be as casual and as colloquial as I can uh, about this, but this is a major, major get for us. Um, Scott is a best-selling author. Some of you I know have read his books, The Levity Effect, People, People, The Seven Ups of Happiness, uh, A Carrot a Day. <laughs> Scott has been quoted in, in, in things that you and I know very well, like the New York Times, Washington Post, Newsweek, Forbes. He's been on C, uh, CNBC, uh, Fox News, uh, The Today Show. Um, Scott, in, in his uh, spare time, if, if he, I don't think as much of that, but in his spare, he finds the time. He's also a television host, an MC, uh, an actor who's appeared on television series like NCIS. He's been on Modern <laughs> Family, Criminal Minds, uh, Granite Flats, Touched by an Angel. He's been on the Disney Channel, Heart, Hallmark, where I tend to see him very often, um, Lifetime, Netflix, Amazon. Um, but Scott, despite all these things that he's done, Scott is truly an expert uh, in, in um, what I would say, organizational culture. He's got a uh, master's degree in HR management from the University of Conne uh, Connecticut, right? He's the president of Levity Matters. He did his undergraduate work at BYU. Um, he was honored with the United States most prestigious acting scholarship, the Irene Ryan Award at the Kennedy Center in Washington, DC. And now he and his wife, and I'm, 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 I have a sense that she's going to, to come up in the discussion today. He and his wife live in, in Salt Lake City. Um, and, and have five sons and, and, and two grandchildren. But let me just say also, uh, I, you guys, the reason I say this is a major get is I, I know Scott's talent. We have contracted him out um, in years past to come and speak to our agencies. I know agencies, government agencies, have hired him to come and speak to their leaders. Um, he has worked with Fortune, I can't begin to tell you how many Fortune 500s uh, and other professional associations have hired him. Uh, to come and bring some levity to whether their conferences or to their organizations, but also to because he understands how to make positive organizational cultures. Um, and, and so Scott is truly an expert there. And this is truly, a, a, we're, we're lucky to have him here now. Now, the other thing I'll tell you, I've got a note here from Scott that says, Dan, please tell them how good I am at basketball. Um, so I, I've got that note to myself. Um, I happen to play basketball or have played basketball with Scott and tell you he's a pretty amazing athlete and pretty amazing at basketball too. So um, we can add that to the list. But um, I, I could go on and on uh, about Scott's talent and, and about how lucky we are to have him and, uh, and, and, and how critical his message is. And I think especially critical for us in government today where we don't often focus on these things as we should so without further ado i am going to stop sharing and i'm going to invite you to pin scott so if you see scott's screen there where it says the levity effect if you hover your your mouse over that you're going to see a little icon that looks like a thumbtack if you would pin scott 
um, that then uh, you're you're going to get the, the the best of this presentation. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as well. And without further ado, I'm going to turn the time over to Scott Christopher. Hey Dan, one thing yeah. um, they need to pin the interpreter too. Okay, if you, if you need that interpreter to pin the interpreter, is that right? Am I yeah. getting that right, Shane? Okay, yeah. thank you for that. All right, thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. The, uh, that round of virtual applause is ringing in my ears. I know this somebody was following me on my Turkeys Across America tour that I uh, just finished. Ask someone else. It's a bowling thing. Um, but I was I, I I was going back to Tennessee to visit my family, my my son and his wife and their kids, and um, and I wanted to be able to write it off. So I um, I don't know if I can, but anyway. So I'm doing it for charity. I, I bowled at different locations around the country and um, and tried to get a turkey, which is three strikes in a row. And for every turkey that I bowled, I would donate a turkey dinner for the holidays to the Utah Food Bank or Saint, uh, you know, one of the saints down there, Saint Ignatius or Saint uh, Fred, um, for their dinners. And uh, I think I got like four turkeys. I'm not a good bowler. I once was, but I, I no longer am. Anyway, enough of my yakking about that. Let's let's let me just dive right in. Let me make myself a little smaller here so you can see things. According to Google Translate, the most commonly translated words in the world every day are this. You don't have to write any answers. Just think about this. I'm going to give you the multiple choice. Hi, how are you? Nice to see you. Uh, here they are. How are you? Thank you. Or I love you. Or there's actually four choices. Hey, Putin, you suck. Believe me, there's so many languages in which that one is being translated every single day. Would it shock you to know that the top three actually are kind of tied? This was pretty loosely structured research from Google Translate. So these are the most commonly translated. And the reason that I bring this up is because it is somewhat thematic to our overall message today, which is we're just people getting up, going to work, coming in, dealing with problems and situations. And this is kind of the softer side of things. Um, I'm kind of a soft side specialist, as it were. Uh, even though I'm not great at it myself, um, this is still kind of what I, what I focus on. So we're going to talk a little bit about this stuff today. You can see on the left there, recognition and appreciation, feeling a sense of belonging, have a, 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 a positive constructive relationship with their boss. Well, let's get back to the fun stuff because um, we will get into that. A little confession. Um, I am a bit of an outsider. Uh, and by the way, look look at the collective of stars in that photo. You got your, right above me there, your, your Patrick Swayze, RIP. You've got your Emilio Estevez. You've got the kid from Karate Kid. You've got Matt Dillon behind him, then you've got Pony Boy, and then Rob Lowe and Tom Cruise. I mean, you know, but for the grace of God, go their eye. Because I'm about their age, and um, <laughs> it would have been fun. I loved the books, the outside. I'm an interloper. My point is here is that I'm not exactly, you know, a governmental, civic expert. And I'm not even very smart at all, if I'm being completely honest with you. I mean, sure, I'm an actor. <laughs> that should qualify me right away as someone from whom you will learn. And yet somehow, uh, yeah, Modern Family, as mentioned, thanks, Dan, all these different shows. Great, great, great. Some of you will have even remembered best two years. This is the one where I can be anywhere in the world and somebody that's of a particular faith will go, hey, you know, which is always fun, um, and I like it. I enjoy it. I do. But that was the dream, you know, to become this actor. And uh, but the reality is somewhat uh, different. But you can look up all the different titles and credits I've been in, if that's of interest to you, on IMDb.com. And it's good for me too because it raises like my profile score, and then I'm more likely to be ignored by even bigger production outfits. All right, let's move on. So I took all of my dreams and ambitions and I uh, got a master's degree in human resources management, which I've never worked in once, except from the training and development perspective 
uh, that was my emphasis anyway. So I am also um, a certified professional in talent development, which used to be uh, uh, something else. I can't even CPLP, learning professional, from the American Society of Training and Development, which you know that acronym was somewhat unfortunate because it included STD. So they've they've changed it to something less um, hideous. But anyway. That's so great. And then, of course, the thing I'm most proud of that I hang my hat on is that I'm not a certified professional life coach. Um, I feel like, you know, do we really need those? I, I mean, I thank you for all the laughter. I, I would agree with you and laugh as well. Um, uh, I, you have a life coach, and she's called Ma. Or conversely, Jesus, God, but whatever. There's life coaches aplenty that, that you don't have to pay for. Or, But that's, you know, it's a generational thing. And I know there's probably those from that generation who are offended right now. That's why this particular presentation is called Lighten Up, right? So, so I'm going to give you ample opportunities to feel somewhat offended. Here's the lesson. Are you offended for someone else or are you truly offended? And by the way, I won't actually have a bunch of offensive material. That's This is about it. And there's my mom. Rest in peace. She she passed a couple of years ago. Great bowler, by the way. But anyway, moving on. No time. There's my delighted wife, Liz. You can see how happy she is. Wow. What a, what a face that uh, she has there. <laughs> Uh, she's actually really sweet, um, but we do have five sons, and uh, as they've gotten older, she's gotten happier, and they've gotten more serious. They, this looks like they're posing for the you know a cover of a rock album or something. Um, if you don't know what an album is, we can talk offline. Those of you that are are younger, it was a big round spinny thing, like a Victrola. Um, but she has a great sense of humor. And by saying that, I don't mean to imply that she tells jokes. In fact, she's never told a joke in her life, as far as I can recall. Uh, that's just not her thing. But she has a good sense of humor. Let me explain. Um, when she found out what LOL actually stands for, because for the longest time she thought it was lots of love, which in fact, pre-text days, some of us who wrote letters outside of XOXO, we might actually have put LOL, meaning lots of love. And so one night while we were just kind of laying in bed reading and she, she looked up and she went, what does LOL stand for? And I said, laugh out loud. And she went, oh my gosh. And she sat there for a minute and then she started to laugh out loud at herself. And I said, what's so doggone funny? And she said, I have been using it as lots of love right up until today. And she said, they're not always, the most, you know, they're not always aligned, laugh out loud and lots of love. For example, when your sister was going through her divorce and I was texting her and the children, uh, <laughs> everything's going to be okay. It's not about you. You're going to, you're still a family, LOL, Aunt Liz, you know, um, <laughs> My point is, is she could laugh at herself, okay? Um, and that's an important part of lightening up and having levity and a sense of humor, like a sense of taste or a sense of style or a sense of timing. Um, it's just a sense. You know, you don't have to be a stand-up comic to enjoy and reap the benefits at work and at home of lightening up. You don't have to be born with this gene that makes you hilarious and relatable and timely and relevant. You can be introverted. You can be whatever it is you are, but still have a sense of humor. And we'll talk a little bit more about that. Now, <laughs> some of you may be at this point wondering what the crud why did i why am i on this session and at the moment there's 601 of you 
at least on this particular call. What the crud? I thought we were gonna, I don't know what this is. Am I getting CE points or whatever? Um, I just like to see John C. Riley. Anyway, my point is, is that I wanna ask you these fundamental questions. Just think about the first five minutes of this presentation. Was there anything in there that made you smile? Or laugh, chuckle, chortle, titter, even tinkle? Who knows, a little incontinence, some product placement, very subtle, I know. I have no money invested in any of these organizations. It's just a reminder that as adults, we can wear diapers, and that's okay. I'm 56 years old now. I'm not saying I do, I'm not saying I don't, but I don't, but I might. <laughs> the point is, is that it's good for you to laugh. And I know I'm preaching probably to mostly the converted. I gotta make myself smaller again so you can see, you know, more of the slide. Uh, look at all the cool things that Levity at work does. Now, this is all statistically MIT, Wharton, London Business School, uh, Harvard Business Review. All of these, you know, supposedly serious, grave, you know, uh, very uh, uptight organizations are essentially coming back and saying, look, stress and boredom, engagement and well-being, it spurs collaboration and creativity. There's a handful of benefits of, hi, hi there. <laughs> I forgot to change. I have so many little things going on to bring this presentation to you in uh, in living color and with me on the screen that it uh, it requires some some deft uh, footwork here hand work. Uh, so we're going to talk a little bit about all of this stuff. These are the books. Don't buy them. I don't care. They're not very good, but they give me a platform in which to uh, treat these topics um, semi credibly. Um, and so as Dan kind of oversold me, I'm not, you know, the hugest expert in the world on this stuff, but I'm one of a handful who actually talk about it as it relates to the workplace and business. And um, without trying to sell you a bill of goods, you know, this is just what I'm good at, what I've done some research on and, um, and I've been able to talk about it more. So let's, let's get into the what of all of this. And to start it off, I want to take a little bit from one of the books called People, People. And the cover was not my idea. <laughs> Who they are, why they win, how to be one. Let me ask you this question, and I want you to use, to all be involved and use your, your typity typers, the uh, chat thing there, I can see them. What is a people person? Now, here's, the, here's what I want you to type in. A one or two word at the most description just off the top of your head don't overthink this when you think of the term a people person what comes to mind okay just quick ones i see connected outgoing fun relatable love it charismatic talkative again these are top of your head people i know a people person tara Connolly. she's a real extrovert relatable chatty extrovert i'm putting them up here in real time as far as you know as we do this Love it. Talker, likable. Now, Jacob says understanding. He's getting too deep. Don't go crazy or you'll ruin my whole point. Thank you for that. So, relatable, friendly, approachable. You can see them on there. There's a lot of different things. Let me tell you a quick little story. I travel frequently. I was in the uh, Salt Lake International Airport going through realized that I'd forgotten to bring or had inadvertently left behind my headphones, which you got to have. Long story short, I stopped off at one of those Hudson booksellers or Deseret New, whatever the little stores are, um, to buy a, just a pair of uh, earbuds, nothing fancy. And they still were $23.95, you know. But as you know, as you can kind of see there, that's, um, I, I can't even remember her name. It's on the tag, but it's, it's a, from another country. She's English as a second language. Um, as I pay for these, she says to me, looking at the packaging, which is this hard industrial plastic that a, there's no traveler in the world who got a blowtorch through security or a Bowie knife or heaven forbid a pair of scissors. How in the living heck is a traveler going to get into this clam 
So this sweet, wonderful, customer forward thinking servant, as it were, says to me, and I went, I'm sorry, what was that? And I think I made out, do you want me to open it for you? So there you see her. She opened the drawer. She got out a pair of scissors. And she, you know, she dug into that plastic and got those things out. I would have lost several fingers trying to open that myself. You know how that plastic can sever a major artery. It at least rip off your fingerprints. What a sweetheart. Now, I ask you, was she a people person? Now, based on our definition of off the top of the head, well, no, she would be the complete opposite. Not talkative, not terribly outgoing, very demure, very shy, very quiet, introverted. I, well, I mean, all of the things that we didn't say, except a couple of you who were, you know, thinking a little deeper. Is she a people person? Of course she's a people person. And because I have a lot of time and no one asked me, I did my own little research. And by the way, I apologize if you can hear today's uh, Riverton, Utah garbage personnel picking up uh, my cans. I'm using like an Omni microphone that picks up all the sounds as opposed to my, my good one for voice work. Um, so I'll, I'll talk on my dogs. I have a little Yorkie and a mini schnauzer. I'm trying to keep them quiet. Three kinds of people, people talking about. Yes, there are three kinds of peeps. Here they are, type one. There, there he is. <laughs> uh, this is the just the traditional, you've already called it, the ones that are affable and outgoing and charming and funny and charismatic and interesting or extroverts, whatever. They're great in a typical environment in marketing and sales. They're the people people out there that we think of maybe even to a fault to some degree. Why? Because these are pure P ones. Okay. So I want you to imagine, if you will, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go big now. Woo! Imagine a uh, well, that's almost shockingly huge. I mean, based on what we're used to, um, a spectrum, a gamut. Uh, let's just take a clothesline and stretch it across the room, whatever. And on one end, you have the type ones, okay? So just a pure type one people person has all of those uh, characteristics that are listed there and many, many more. You get what I'm saying. But you have to be careful. Now I'm going to play you a video. The sound might be a little behind. It's not going to sound terribly great, but I hope you can hear it because in it, I hope you like British humor a little bit. Hopefully you understand what they're saying, but just give it a second. There's, there's a problem with being just a pure type one. Oops. And here. So, James, pleasure to meet you, James. Real pleasure to meet you. I heard a lot about you, James. Really? Zing. Like it. So uh, tell me, James, what do you do for your day job? I'm asking because I'm genuinely interested. Well, yeah. well I work in a sewage treatment plant. It's really low key, but yeah. occasionally there's a blockage between yeah. someone has got to physically. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, God, I'm so bloody fascinated, James. I'd like to do my brain to your face. <laughs> Are you even listening? That is so true. I'm not even talking. <laughs> Me neither. God, we've got so much in common. We should totally do lunch. Oh, I see what's going on here. What? You think you're good with people? Sorry. It all makes sense that the fake mateiness, the rapey arm touching, <laughs> the way you keep using my name in a way that makes me feel oddly violated. It's called people skills. Well, I'm sorry to have to break this to you, mate, but these people skills you seem so desperate to thrust them just make you seem weird and a bit scary. No offense, but in a party situation, you seem about as relaxed and friendly as a serial killer doing a police interview while still wearing his last victim's skin. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, <clears throat> so, obviously, um, there, you know, that, that particular approach is fraught with danger. If you are just down on the T1 end, with no other variations, you run the risk of coming off as being a real cheese bag. And in that case, I just love that humor. Um, 
a serial killer who's still doing a police interview while wearing his last victim's skin. Just kind of gross, but funny. What are you going to do? So the type twos are down at the other end of the spectrum, right? This is the complete opposite. So this is also a very raw definition. They're not outgoing. They're very introverted. They're shy. They're quiet, kind of like uh, the woman that helped me at the store there. They prefer anonymity. They're, they're, they're in, whereas a type one is interesting, a type two is interested, if that makes sense. It, it will in a minute. They're substance over style, whereas type ones are more style over substance. They are sincere and authentic. You might even ask what, what puts the, why, why are they even on the spectrum of people, people to begin with? And that's why they truly care about people. But because of these other characteristics, they just aren't as bombastic about it or even very open or communicative about it, which can be a real liability. Um, it just is. Well, you, you understand that, certainly. Uh, they're good to people, whereas a type one is good with people. A type two is good to people. Now, where do you put yourself, you know, on the spectrum? The ideal, obviously, is to be a type three. And by the way, just a quick look at antisocial. You know, you remember 30 years ago or so, I had one of these disc men things. Trying to jog with one of those was like just a joke. Forget it. Unless you were rich enough to get the one that had a lot of memory. And then it wouldn't skip. But otherwise, you might as well be trying to run with a turntable on your belt. It's pretty futile. Um, today, you know, we kind of close each other out as well. Same thing. Everybody has the headphones and the little digital devices. The only thing that's changed is the kind of the sizes, you know. That's pretty much all you've got there. $400 headphones that cover your head. My grandma used to have those from Radio Shack. They were either realistic or tandy with the curly cord. Yeah, now a rapper puts his name on them and they're $1,500. No offense to rappers everywhere. One of my sons is, uh, is a rapper. And I still don't like the music. Um, that's some of it. Like Gangsta's Paradise. <laughs> you know, a song from 28 years ago. I like that one. <laughs> or anyway, let's move on. So type three is the perfect blend of the type one and the type two. They're good with and good to people. They're the people that maybe were born as extroverts and lampshade wearers, if you know what I mean, but they've learned to be more sincere and authentic and to have a little more under the surface. Or the, the opposite. They are quiet people. It's just how you are. We understand that. You know, but you've You've learned a couple of things, a nice firm handshake, a look in the eye when you talk. Um, you know, I wouldn't suggest repeating their name over and over once you learn it. it. That becomes like in the video. Yes, James, wonderful James. Great to meet you, James. Heard a lot about you. You know, it's like, shut up with my name. It's, it's such an affectation. The idea is to become authentic, to be who you really are, but the best who you really are. I remember my brother was, uh, was called to be the bishop of his LDS ward in North Dakota many years ago. And he called me to say that he felt so just, I can't do this. What am I supposed to do? Uh, you know, I, I, I have a personality, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm funny and outgoing and all of, he's a real T1-ish leaning kind of a guy. He's an attorney, you know. And I said, James, they're not, they, he, no one is asking you to change who you are. Maybe just be the best you that you can be. All of those gifts and skills, the, the humor, the fun, the singing. I mean, those will only make you a, a, a better bishop for the people who need you to be that bishop at that time. So don't feel, anyway, that's, that's for, you know, for the 2% of you in this audience who understand anything at all about the LDS church, because I'm well aware that the vast majority of you working in the state of Utah are, are, um, are Jack Mormons. Anyway, no, I'm kidding. That's a joke. That is so, and it's not even a very good one. Um, but apparently two of you liked it. So I agree. It's not, I was, I didn't plan that one. You're learning a lesson as we go. See, I don't just come in teaching the theory. 
I practice it. I told you I was going to push a few buttons. Okay, so we want to become a T3 if possible. Why? Why does this matter? What's the big deal? Why be a T3, a real people person? Well, without showing all the pie charts and graphs, here's some of just the basics. Over time, a person who is a real T3, these are some of the results, depending on where you work, obviously, private business, you know, as well, closing more deals, things like that. But enjoying a greater social life, making more and having better friends, living longer and healthier lives. Ugh. This guy, he haunts me. Um, He's a doctor out of Maryland, and he he's in all these men mag, men's magazines. Now I don't know how he does the whatever, but could we get that off of my shoulder, please? Thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> Google, high tech company, very you know serious mostly, right? But they wanted to find out what makes a great manager, a great leader at Google, and so they did a bunch of focus groups and surveys and you know all that stuff, feedback. And they kind of boiled it all down, and they came up with a list of like 10 or 12 different characteristics of the best leaders at Google, or what the people said, who the people said were the best. And all across the board, it was the soft stuff, good coaching skills, they're, they express their interest, they say thank you, they're good communicators, soft stuff. Their technical expertise as a boss was the least important to the people. Um, it matters, but it's dead last. What they learned was, as Laszlo Bach, who's become kind of famous in some circles in HR, but he reported, we always believed you need to be as deep or deeper a technical expert than the people who work for you. Much more important is just making that connection and being accessible. Again, this is lightening up. This is levity. It's being accessible, making connections, kind of walking on the soft side. What they learned essentially is the old adage, people don't care what you know until they know that you care. Simple, I know. So how do you do all of this? Here's where the people people care concept comes in. There are four key components of care, communication, authenticity, respect, and enjoyment. Our, our, the balance of our focus in a minute will be mostly on that last one, which actually is supposed to be levity. But because CARE is such a great acronym, and Carl, uh, while a great name, isn't necessarily, doesn't have the punch. So I, I changed it to enjoyment, which kind of sits there. But So very quickly, let's just, I'll walk you through the first three and then we'll get into levity. Communication, of course, is important. As a people person, a real T3 people person, cares about how their message is encoded, decoded, how it's received, how it's perceived, all of that. I'm not going to get into the nuts and bolts. But a real T3 people person just listens. They don't prepare what they're going to say necessarily unless it's right up at the point. You know what I'm saying? You can tell when people are just thinking of what they're going to say next to you rather than and then, and then they jump in. Let me tell you this. Oh, this, this may require. Well, it doesn't require. Nothing requires me. In acting, they say that acting is reacting. And that's kind of what I'm talking about here is like when, when I'm in a scene on, in a, on a stage or, or in a film or TV or whatever, it's listening. You know, you get all the mechanical stuff done first. You memorize the script. However you do that, some people are quick studies. Others have to do all, there's all, all kind of tricks. Pardon me, we're live. And when a fella chokes on his own uh, gastric, that's just going to happen. And that's the beauty of our topic today, is we're okay with that. Now, I'm not going to do a Barney from the Simpsons belch here. I'm just going to swallow it down, save it for later, for someone else who will really appreciate it. Um, <laughs> I have no idea what I'm talking about. So you listen, you listen, you listen. You get all the words in your head, and then you just listen to them. Would you guys stop laughing? <laughs> all right, I'm taking myself back off. All right, that's, I, I got, I got, let's go to medium, Scott. There, that's, that's, that's good. Okay, so uh, you want to be interesting. You want to vary your tone, your tempo, your gestures. Use humor where it's possible, where it's appropriate, and where it's not going to be stupid. But even then, 
you know, just making efforts, communicating with a little bit of levity, people appreciate it. Um, here in this case, in an ironic twist, twist uh, I actually owe you for the time that you've invested in this. I owe you something. I can't just rely on this amazing material. It just sits there on a screen. I, I color up the screen. I put myself on it. I, I, I use different tones and I slow things down or speed them up. Now, I'm not thinking of that in the moment. It's, that just comes kind of naturally for me. But you can learn it too. It, it's, it's not that hard. A little bit of coaching, a little bit of directing, maybe even from someone like me. I said someone like me, not me. That's up to you. Anyway, uh, let's move forward. That's, that's moving back. See, now I have to click on that to go. There we go. Authenticity is the next piece of the care little puzzle. I've talked a little bit about this, so I don't need to go too deep into it. I will mention once I was speaking to a group of, um, of managers at Michelin in South Carolina. We were talking about levity and lightening up. And one guy says to me, I wish my boss had been here. He should have come to this. He, he needs it more than anyone. I said, how so? He said, oh, he's so just, he's like a despot. You know, he's just top down my way or the highway, old school. I don't care if you hate me as long as you respect me, which in 2023, you know, that just doesn't fly because most of us don't respect you if we hate you. How many people do you see walking down the hall? Hey, what do you think about Dave? Oh, Dave, he's a jerk. He's a, oh, he's just a blowhard and an idiot and he's just mean spirited and I just hate his guts. I, I can't stand the very sight of him. It turns my stomach. The bile rises to my mouth the minute he says a word. Yeah, but you got to respect him, right? Oh, respect him. Get out of here. Huh. Totally respect him. So this guy, he says, he's just a jerk. He should be here. And he said, you know, it's weird. Uh, my brother, this is the guy talking in South Carolina. My brother lives in an HOA community where there's a guy there who is just the absolute opposite. He's the life of the party. He's quick with a joke or to light up your smoke. And there's no place that he'd rather be, right? Um, he's just so much funny. He has the big screen TV. All the guys in the neighborhood just have romantic feelings for him because he's so cool. And I said, yeah, that's kind of what we're shooting for, I guess. I, I don't know. I mean, not, that's not necessarily what I mean. But if it draws people to you, makes you likable, maybe they're more willing to listen. He said, no, 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 no. He said, I went to my brother's over the weekend. I finally got to meet this guy that he's been raving about for years. He said, I went to like a little gathering at the clubhouse. This guy was my boss. He said, it's Phil, the guy I've been telling you about. It's him. It's Jekyll and Hyde. He's like, what the? He said, I came back to work. I told my, my, my coworkers. They didn't believe me. He said, what is this man thinking? that somehow we're going to have a lack of respect or trust or we won't do our work because he's funny or interesting or lighthearted or kind, heaven forbid. You know, he's the kind of guy who says, yeah, you get your kindness every two weeks in your paycheck. Boom. You know, like, wow, that's, that's, that's it, huh? Thanks. Why can't he be authentic? What's stopping him? If this guy were really himself, the, the, the other man reported to me, we would follow him to the yawning gates of hell if he acted that way at work. Right now, we're just staying there because we're intimidated. We're scared. The economy's rough. We don't want to lose our jobs. Crazy. I just keep going back to big me. Let's move on. Respect is the third one. Give a little respect to me. Name that band. Go ahead, type it in. That's not Aretha Franklin. Let's see who's going to be first to Erasure. Oh, thank you. Oh, I love Terry, Tari, Allison, Stephen, Tara Connolly. These are people who know 80s music. They're your old people. Look around. They're probably graying, maybe a little paunchy. No, I don't know. Erasure. Anyway. Uh, let's talk about respect for a minute from an organizational standpoint. Oh, I got to get 1040 already. I, 
I have no time for this kind of nonsense. Everyone knows who that is, of course, Jordan Clarkson. The headline in the Deseret News was, Jordan Clarkson has finally found his NBA fit with the Utah Jams. Or I could do it with my hot rod Hudley voice. I go ask scoop right out of Jordan Clarkson has finally found his NBA fit with the Utah Jams. How do you gotta love it, baby? Um, unfortunately, that's, yes, thank you. That, that's so irrelevant today because he's been dead for so long. I, can, I can't even use that anymore. Like him working at Lagoon. Don't stop, don't bump, have fun. Or working for Delta Airlines. Bum. As you can see, the captain has turned on the fast of the CPAP line, indicating our initial descent into the Salt Lake City area. It's, it's fine. <clears throat> So Jordan comes over. He's been with three or four other teams. He can't find a home. He's a prolific scorer, but not great on defense. You know, the Jazz say, come over here and do your thing. We want you to come on the floor and automatically. We want you to be instant offense. We love it. We dig it. We'll help teach you defense. People that come aboard with certain characteristics but lack up can always be developed. There's training and development. Again, that's kind of my field. We can develop all of that. His quote was, the organization has let me be myself. And I mean, they did not let him go. I think they just renewed him with three year, four year, hundred million dollar, whatever. So that is respect. So communications, authenticity, respect. And then finally, levity or enjoyment. Here's the three keys. This is all very high level, by the way. I am not even getting into granular details. So if you're taking notes, these are just kind of the one word notes that you want to take. Latitude, attitude, and gratitude. That's what makes up levity at work. There's a lot to that. I, what? How am I? What am I supposed to do when that happens? I put. I did this. Okay. Uh, so latitude. Start off with latitude. My father, when he retired from insurance, moved down to Florida and got a job as uh, a, the conductor of the Serengeti Express at Bush Gardens. He was hired because of his personality. He's funny, he's outgoing, he's witty, he's quick. He was, pardon me, he, he also passed away a couple of years ago, but not before he told me this wonderful story of his employment at Bush Gardens. I mean, he's retired, but he wants to do something, he wants to stay busy. And Human Resources has this little program where, you know, if you're, you know, you do an amazing job for a guest um, and they unsolicited want to thank you somehow, you know, these little spiffs you can get at some organizations. Um, they write up a quick little thank you card and turn it into the main office, and then it's worth an extra 10 bucks to that employee's paycheck. You know, it's a small de minimis value, right? He said, is it okay if I take some liberties with the tour that I'm giving on this train? And to their credit, they gave him latitude and they said, just, just get the script memorized and then you can add your own shtick. Almost similar to what I was saying earlier about acting, you know, get the script in your head and then you're free to just listen. You're just listening to someone and reacting and it just comes out naturally. It's not robotic, it's not stiff. It's just forget all the words and just listen. So my dad kind of got all the scripts down and then just listened to the, the, the pulse of the people on the train and then he would add jokes, he would mess with them. With you guys, I'm at a disadvantage. I'm normally in front of people. I'm normally, this is taking all this and putting it virtual is a real stretch for me. I love interacting with you, seeing the looks on your face, hearing the gasps, watching people walk out. I can feel generally from a crowd. In this case, we have the emojis, which is great because I'm getting a lot of laughter ones. I'm not sure what the bad one is. Maybe it's a Satan or thumbs down. I don't think I've seen many, a cry one. Okay. Thank you. Good. There's thanks. Thank you. All right, enough of those, unless you really mean them. Uh, but he went about doing his he went about doing his own thing, and he said uh, they said the annual average of these ten dollar spiffs in each paycheck was less than one per employee per year, and in his first month of work, he got forty five of them. It paid for him to lighten up. Now, you might think, well, it paid him to lighten up, but what good does it do Bush Gardens? Are you kidding me? Boy, what a differentiator. This is a, an organization that's competing in Florida for amusement park money. You think they're not grabbing at every straw they can to help set themselves apart. 
So they honor that. They love that. This master of customer service, how is he serving the customers? He's helping them keep their mood light on incredibly hot roasting days with chafing and blisters. All the East Coasters down there with their grandkids or whatever to get on a train to take a little break and have this funny old dotty old man. Yeah, it pays to lighten up. By the way, that's my dad. I don't, I don't know who this other guy is. I just thought he looked more sympathetic as I'm telling the story. So, but my dad is actually that guy. He's a biker. He's got tattoos. He talked like this. Uh, very funny man. But no more lying from here on out, as far as you know. But it pays to lighten up. A little more serious of an industry, a hospital out of Dallas, or pardon me, out of uh, Kentucky, actually. The Norton Audubon Hospital. The director of food services told me they were in the first percentile nationally for food service satisfaction, which includes not just the taste of the food, but primarily the service. In room, in cafeteria, first percentile. Now, for some of his employees, they were like high-fiving. We're number one. This is awesome. We don't even try. He's like, obviously, you don't understand percentiles. First percentile means we're the worst in the nation. So what did he do? He said, he brought in a cow. I can't even remember why I have that there. He did not bring in a cow. He said, we are going to lighten up. I know this is a hospital. I know it's the most serious place on planet Earth because people are recuperating. Some are even not recuperating. Sad people are coming through all the time. But doggone it, if it worked on MASH, you know, or Patch Adams, you know, the laughter is the best medicine. We're not even the docs and nurses. We're just the food people. Can't we brighten people's day? Let's wear costumes. Let's tell jokes. Let's mess around. I want to hear laughter reverberating off the walls. He said we made a, po a conscious effort to be positive with everything. We started stressing we should have fun at work. We got out of the business of serving meals and into the business of helping heal patients. And that's a lot more fun. And they went from the first to the 99th percentile in the next like survey period. They went from worst to first because they allowed their people to laugh and enjoy and of course, to do it appropriately, but holy cow, what a difference that makes. If you laugh at home, if you're fun at home or at church or in your civic responsibilities, if you have a sense of humor, be a holistic person. Let's bring it all to work. Be the same person that would. I got to show you this, this little video. Hopefully you'll, you'll get This is a commercial I was in. This is about latitude lightening up. This is probably 20 years ago. And I think it just kind of you know, kind of illustrates nicely sort of this idea of lighten up and, you know, give a little bit of your time even. Okay, now that's been a big presentation due Monday. Maybe Daddy can play next week, okay? Daddy doesn't work, Daddy doesn't get paid. People like Daddy's work so much, they pay him for it. What now? What's this? Can I buy some of your time? No, you can't. Well, that's a shame. That's, uh, you know, what are you going to do? Daddy says no. So move on, kid. Yeah, that's it. I just like ending it there. I think it's funnier. Um, it's 1048. I'm only on to attitude. I got to get moving. To you to talk a little bit about latitude or attitude, I'm going to use some of the stuff from my other presentation called Seven Ups of Happiness. First of all, make up your mind. Can you choose happiness? Of course you can. You choose it mostly for short-term happiness. And you choose it for long-term, but you can immediately lighten yourself up, right? You can just smile more. You can, you can be more happy. It's not, uh, it's not that challenging. Uh, look at these people. If you were just look at 100 random people on the street, adults, not children, how many have at least one reason that they should be sad? Grief, sorrow, anxiety. What do you think? How many out of 100? Would you say adults are carrying around some kind of anxiety, stress, pain? Star says 100. Vern says 100. Jill says 100. Mindy says all. Pam says all. So we're in agreement. This is consensus, even without seeing Annette, Sharon, Christy, 100 out of 100, I would say as well. Every stinking one of them, every adult out there. Yet look at, if you can, get up close to your screen or put your phone in your face, wherever you're at. How many appear to be at least smiling or happy or have a twinkle in their eye 
Um, not all of them, but quite a bit do anyway. Um, we can choose that. We can choose to just smile and be happy. Does happiness even matter at work? Of course it does. More, you know, results, productivity, in a, in a, innovation, fewer sick days, higher uh, sales. I covered it because it doesn't really matter to you guys. Less turnover, less accidents, happiness matters. Shape up. This is all part of your attitude of levity. The mood benefits of just 20 minutes of exercise a day can just be awesome. Uh, some of my tips, elevators are for chumps. If you're going to the second or third floor, for heaven's sakes, if you can, take the stairs. Escalators, same thing, chumps. Moving walkways for the love. It's a walkway. It's moving. At least stand to the right and get out of my way. Just stand. It says it right there on the metal thing. Stand here, walk here, boom, chumps. Valet parking, chumporama. Use the whole parking lot. Get all those steps in, right? Golf carts, yeah, please, please use a cart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a pass on that. You're slowing all of us down, and I don't even golf anymore. How much sleep as adults do we really need? Seven to nine hours a night. I, I haven't gotten that in ages. Why does it matter? It improves our mood, our weight, our performance. We pay attention. We're just not grouches. You know what I mean? And I can be a real hangry grouch if I'm not sleeping we're not eating properly. Survey says, we're going to skip a couple, open up. This is all about doing things for other people. Those instant uppers that make you instantly happy also cumulatively will make you long-term happy, but for just now, make the bed without being asked. Offer your seat on public transit. What's the matter, sweetie? You look, Don't say sweetie unless you're, what's the matter? Just whatever. Um, actually serving meals at the homeless shelter downtown. I've done that a few times. It's so cool, right? Hey, I just felt I needed to call you. Is something going on? I'm just reaching out, knocking off a 7-Eleven and keeping the money. Uh, just making sure you're paying attention and still that one may make you temporarily happy or, you know, meet a need, but likely you'll be, you know, in the clink and then, then it's not happy. Uh, you know, doing the dishes, cleaning the table, Washing, you'll notice that all of these are men. I don't know if that's uh, significant or not. Without being asked, getting out and shoveling your walk, when you get to the edge of your property, do you stop right at the crack or do you go and just do your neighbors because you have a minute and why not? It's always nice. When it comes to mowing lawns, go ahead and let them mow their own. They know how they like it. I set it at two for the edges. I put it at five for the middles. Unless your neighbor is this guy, then please do us all a favor and mow his lawn, because that is just sheer wrong. The up and up. You want to be happy, you want to have a great attitude, you want to sleep well at night. Here's a small list of things. Honor, integrity, honesty, fulfilling your commitments, say what you're going to do, keep your word, finish what you start, pay off your debt, return what you borrow, no BS, no hype, keep it straight, keep it real, no stealing, no cheating, no lying, an honest day's pay for an honest day's work. That's all part of being. Now, three levity learnings, three quick, quick takeaways from the Harvard Business Review. We talked about a sense of humor is linked to higher pay and a faster climb up whatever ladder you might be on. Why is that? Well, maybe because people who successfully use humor at work are seen as more confident and competent, which is, needless to say, a good thing to have when wanting to make more money or be promoted or whatever from the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology. Love that. And finally, memes are stupid. So three big takeaways there. Remember, you don't have to be funny in order to have a sense of humor. I was trying to explain this on the Today Show once, and I was roundly accused of flirting. You tell me if anything about this feels flirtatious. The fact of the matter is most people aren't necessarily born with a, you know, your kind of sense of humor, very oh, acute. You. Yeah. Uh, and you're cute as well. You I mean, think I'm, I'm cute? Well, yeah, you're yeah. cute. Sure, you're cute. Anyway. I don't see it. I don't, I don't see it. Uh, it, was, it was, I just honestly, I was talking about being cute as a little puppy. All I care is about my wife and her response, and she was fine. So uh, no worries there. I'll take either LOL on that one, to be honest. Percent of bosses who think their jokes are really, really funny? 96% think they're really, really funny. Percent of employees who agree? 
Percent of employees who agree when the boss is the one asking, are my jokes really, really funny? It rockets right back up to 98%. Are we disconnected a little bit with these people? Our bosses, our employees, we've got to make sure we're just openly communicating and being honest. Remember, it's your sense of humor. Just because you don't think something funny doesn't mean it isn't funny. It just isn't funny to you. We're not all built the same at work, at home, even among our family. Let's do a quick poll. We've got a few minutes left. I want to do a quick poll. So we're going to put a poll question up here. I want you to tell me which one is funnier to you on the poll question. Dan, there it is. Which of these is funnier to you? And I, I thought I had a slide, but I, I maybe it's, oh, there it is. Okay. So of those three, Kevin Hart, Will Ferrell or Melissa McCarthy, I just kind of grabbed three somewhat diversely ranked. Of those three, tell us which one you think is funnier. Or none, Kevin, 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 the middle one, Will, Melissa, Will, Will, Melissa, 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 Will, Will, Kevin, Melissa. So even just on these three among the... 566, see we've lost a few. I knew I would I would drive some away. We still can't even agree. Now obviously if this were to increase in number, it would get even harder for us to agree. We all just have a different sense of humor. Gratitude is the last and final piece of the puzzle. The New York Times recently published an article from a huge decades long bit of research. Gratitude really is good for you. Why? It lowers depression and anxiety. It helps you with your sleep. It lowers your blood pressure. Your self-esteem is higher. Your satisfaction. Your relationships will improve. When it comes to gratitude and being thankful at work, be specific. Don't just say you're great. Don't just say thank you. Don't just say happy anniversary or congratulations on five years. You put me thank you. on the bones. Thank you for not judging me. Thank you for listening. For never giving up on me. For telling me the truth. Thank you for... Thank you for understanding. For understanding my pain. Thanks for giving me hope. Thank you for seeing me as a person. For being there when I needed you. No, oh, that's a commercial of people thanking nurses at a specific hospital. They're being specific. Uh, let's move past this. Be frequent. If you're married... No, I wasn't on the poll of funny people, but thank you. If I were on it, I'm sure in the moment you might still say will. Anyway, um, how often do you tell your spouse or significant other that you love him or her? Is it every day? Is it once a week? Is it just in certain moments when you want something, you know, whatever? Are you feeling particularly grateful? Every day, most people will say. Every day, just in little ways, right? Talk to you later. Bye. Love ya. Hey, breakfast was fantastic. We should get meet together for lunch. Okay, bye, bye, love you, love you. Even just the love yous count 20 or more times a day. They don't get old if you really mean them. It, it can be something that's, in fact, take them away in their absence. They're far more conspicuous. Hey, yeah, I'll talk to you a little bit later. Bye-bye. Well, breakfast was fantastic. We should meet up later for lunch. Take care. I mean, where's my love you? It matters. In the workplace, love you is thank you. It's got to be frequent. It has to come often, it, it, especially when it's for real. Don't just shoot them out there willy-nilly. Make sure that there's something specific about it. Being frequent. BYU found that students, middle school students, improved their behavior 70%, including grades and results, when the teachers were uh, uh, intentionally looking for things to praise three to four times an hour individuals, as groups, as the class, whatever. Just building an atmosphere of gratitude moves the proverbial needle. Be timely. If you say it, see it, say it. Do it as quickly as you can. If, it, if it's a handwritten note, which is awesome these days, do it that day or within the hour. Get it to them. The timeliness matters. It means that they matter a lot to you because they didn't wait. Oh, it's the end of the month. We're just going to we're just going to thank everybody for all the good work they did this month. Thanks, guys. Here's some pizza. The, the mechanism, the delivery mechanism is great, but the way it was done was not handled well. Even in the Olympics, the girls are barely off the balance beam before they start doing, you know, the anthem. The kids are barely out. Of, they're still wet when they're getting their medals. Even the kind of the dumb sports that no one cares about or understands why they're... I'm kidding. I told you I defend you. 
but even they get their medals. Synchronized swimming. I mean, it is hard, but an Olympic sport? I'm 56. I'm, gonna, I'm just chalking all of this insensitivity up to my age. It's a generational thing. Can't hide behind that, though, can I? That's why I don't have a full-time job. I, I'm a third-party outsider. Write a thank you note. I'm almost done, Dan and everybody, I promise. I, I don't want to go over anybody's time here. If you need to leave, please leave. If you don't, then don't. I'm almost done. We're right in the last little bit. Um, oh, Kelly Shaw was a synchronized swimmer. Okay, sorry, Kelly. See? But see, I don't know you. If I knew you, then I'd really dig in. I can't hurt anybody's feelings if I don't know them. Be specific. Tell the story. Give details. Um, be strategic, as you can see there. It's not just thank you for thank you's sake, although that's 90% of it. It's also we're at work. We're thanking each other and being grateful because research has also shown that doing the right thing intuitively actually brings strategic results, whether that's just job satisfaction, whether that is retention, whether it's performance. Boom. Be sincere. Obviously, if you don't mean it, don't say it. And if you don't mean it, then start developing these people-people characteristics. Start making it more intentional so that you do care and you do want to say something. You get to know your people. Yes, this presentation is a perk, Rebecca. Man. Okay, almost done. So gratitude, the final bit of gratitude. We showed you this slide earlier. It's right there. It's the first thing on the three top drivers of job satisfaction for you and for your direct reports or your peers. They're recognized and appreciated for what they do. But in addition to that, the feeling a sense of belonging at work, I should point. And then over there somewhere on the other side, uh, oh, above me, people have a constructive relationship with their boss. How cool is that? After all, one of the top reasons why great people perform is not to impress the boss or to satisfy their clients, whatever you call them. It's because they don't want to let their teammates down, the people that you work with on a day-to-day -day basis. Those become your most important shareholders, really, when all is said and done. You're trying to please them, impress them. It's just true. After all, who invented the light bulb? Was it Thomas Edison, Thomas Jefferson, Thomas the Train, Tom Cruise, Tom Brady, the Brady Bunch? No, of course it was Thomas. God. It was Thomas Edison. And another guy named Joseph Swan, who was British across seas. We won't talk about him, but there was some patent issues going on. And anyway, we, we, we attribute it to Thomas Edison. But was it just Thomas Edison only who actually invented the commercially viable bulb? You have Home Depot calling up saying, Tommy, these bulbs you've made are only 13. They burn for eight seconds, 14 seconds. You, you, only, you don't fail 20,000 times. You learn 20,000 things when you fail once or... 95% of perspiration is the stench you carry with you from an onion sandwich you've got under your armpit. I can't remember the actual who invented the sun. Nice. Um, but it was Thomas Edison and a bunch of other people. Yes, he was the brainchild. Yes, he was the leader of the Menlo Park group and all of that. But they had people from diverse backgrounds, diverse disciplines, areas of study, who all came together, the physicists, the chemists, etc., and they took his idea, and as a team... That's what they did. Now, you know Thomas Edison. No, you don't. Let's move on. So they got, they lightened up. Ha ha, big pun there. So remember, in conclusion, ah, latitude, attitude, and gratitude. There's so much more uh, I could tell you in such a different way. But I'm just trying to give you high level so you at least get the gist. Remember latitude, attitude, and gratitude. Remember what we said what feels like three hours ago when I said you're trying to become a type three people person, one who knows how to talk and interact with people, but also actually cares about them. You can choose happiness. It is a choice regardless of what's going on in your life, regardless of any medical diagnoses you're waiting on or any people that are in hospice or any teenager who's gone astray or any substance abuse problems within your own home or even your own or death, depression or anxiety or whatever it is, we all carry around something and yet people somehow still manage to smile. For me, the smiling, the laughter, the keeping things light is kind of my way of showing the universe, you're not gonna, you're not gonna beat me. I, I trust things will work out. So take this home with you to your awkward family.
take it home. Because if you can be kind and precious and wonderful and loving and grateful and funny and all those great things that you unleash at work, make sure your family gets the best of you. Now, this is an older picture. We finally did, after all those boys, get a girl. Um, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. I'm, I'm not sure how I feel about gender reveal parties. I, I'm going to say I'm on the fence, but I'm pretty much not. I, I think they're kind of stupid. Uh, but anyway, we married one. We had to marry the, well, we didn't collectively, but one of my sons, the ginger there, finally got us a daughter-in-law. And now we actually have a granddaughter and a grandson. So never forget, 8% of people keep their New Year's resolutions, 50% of marriages end in divorce, 67% of second marriages, 73% of third marriages, 60% of restaurants close within the first year, 97% of dieters gain back all the weight they lost, and more within three years. Just keeping it positive. So happiness really is easy. Statistically speaking, it's easier than keeping a New Year's resolution to lose weight so your fourth wife won't divorce you over dinner at that new but doomed Pakistani all-beef buffet. That, my dear, wonderful friends, is a quick look at the levity effect, why it pays to lighten up. Let me turn that down. Thanks so much. If uh, you have any questions, you can see, you can send them to me at scottatlevityeffect.com. Or if Dan wants to come back on and give you some final words, I will uh, shut myself up. Thanks, you guys. Thank you, Scott. Obviously, you see how well this has been received. Everybody, please, um, if you'd like to hear more, Scott, as you mentioned, was really high level. Um, he can come in and talk to your agencies or any other associations you're involved with and really help bring positivity to your organizational cultures. Scott at levity.com. Is that right? Um, so we'll, okay, and Dan, we'll make I sure. Said something there. We'll, we'll make sure it was. We'll make sure that we get everybody uh, his contact information. Uh, and everybody, we'll see you next month on Leading Change. And thank Thanks, you, Scott. Guys. This was fun.